Leia Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry. Hello and welcome to Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. Folks, for today's episode, I'm responding to the volume of questions that I've had in on my Instagram account, on my Twitter account, from my clients, from my friends, and that is very simply how to shift the COVID kilos. Over the course of the last 10 to 12 weeks, we've been at home more, we've been eating more, drinking more, and for most people, not moving as much as we normally would. If you're working from home, chances are you're a little bit more static than you were before. So most people have gained weight. This episode is very simply built about how to get yourself back on track with some really simple tips to show you how to do it properly. As ever, there's no quick fixes, there's no fads, there's no gimmicks, there's none of that. It's just very straightforward advice and advice that works and that's exactly what we do. Okay, get your pen, your paper and take a deep breath and join me as I show you how to get back on track to lose those COVID kilos and get yourself back into the healthy state that you were before. One thing I will say, and it's really, really important, is that Any advice I give you over the course of the next 15 to 20 minutes is just take what works for you and do your very, very best. We're not looking for perfection. These are incredibly stressful and concerning and worrying times. And as it begins to relax in terms of the rules and the stages, people are getting even more stressed about how things are going to get back to normal. So don't worry about it. When it comes to your health, you're just trying to do your very, very best. For some people, that'll be maintaining your weight. For others, it'll be losing a pound. For others, it'll be losing a little bit more. The reality is the goal of of this episode is to get you healthier. That's it. So apply what works for you. Apply it for seven days and watch the difference that you can make in just a seven day time frame. Okay, here we go. Tip number one is very, very simple. It's have a specific target to work towards. All too often, health is really, really vague. So make it specific. What do you want to do? Do you want to lose some weight? Do you want to lose some inches around your belly? Do you want to be able to run further, walk further, walk faster, walk up a flight of stairs without getting out of breath, be able to lift the shopping? Everyone has a different goal. But the key thing is, when setting the right target, it's be specific about it. So have a think to yourself, why do I want to get healthy? Obviously, there's loads of benefits in terms of mood-related benefits, in terms of fitness, in terms of the anti-aging effects of exercise and movements and food. But, you know, let's make it more specific. For myself, over the course of COVID, uh, I was training for a marathon. When the marathon was cancelled, with a friend of mine, we set our own marathon. I ran that on Sunday. That kept me driven and focused over the course of the last couple of weeks. And it was a really simple way to keep myself motivated. The specific goal for me was to run that marathon and be fit enough to do it. And then I worked back from there and created my target and built everything around that. So really, really work on your target. Make it as specific as you possibly can. It might be a dress. It might be a bikini, a pair of shorts. It might be an event, although eh, events are things of the past at the moment. But something, just something very specific. And that is the reason that you're going to make these changes. That reason has to be stronger and all the things that will come in your way in terms of making that progress. Those days when you're tired, when you've had a busy day, when you're stressed, when you're feeling low and you want to fall off the wagon, that reason has to be strong enough to get you over. Again, for myself, there are many, many days over the course of the last eight weeks I didn't want to go for a run, but I had to because I had an event coming up and a friend of mine was in the very same event. So it made me continue to train and continue to get out and get my runs done, especially the really big long runs, which are three hours that nobody really wants to do. I had the motivation to do that because my why and my reason was specific and strong enough to get me through the days when I wanted to lie on the couch and watch TV. Okay, hope that makes sense. Even before you go on, spend a little bit of time on that one. It is the most important tip that I will give you. My second tip is about building it into your lifestyle. All too often, people try to get fit, get healthy, lose some weight by trying some really strict variation of a diet or an approach. And the reality is, well, it doesn't really work in the long term. And we know that because it doesn't fit into your lifestyle. It may do for one week or two weeks or three weeks, but in the long term, it doesn't. And you go back to the way you were before and put all the weight back on and do all the results that you have worked so hard to achieve because it was never applicable in the first place. Have a look at your lifestyle. Can you exercise three days a week? Can you exercise four days a week? Can you exercise one day a week? Depending on your lifestyle, well, that should dictate what kind of plan you follow because you build your program and your structure around that lifestyle. 
one of the key times I see that is when people try to, if they're morning people, they try to train in the evening or evening people try to train in the morning. And of course, I'm an evening person. I hate training really early. Therefore, I don't do it because I know it's not going to last and it's not going to work for me in the long term. So therefore, I don't. So I build my structure around my lifestyle, what I like to do. I run in the evening time. I run at weekends. I run at times when it suits me. And that makes a huge difference because I built that program and tailored it around the kind of lifestyle that I lead in terms of work, in terms of family time and downtime, and the program is structured around that. And it's really, really important. So many people miss it. The key word is structure. Have a look at your diary, have a look at your phone, look at when you're going to do stuff and structure the routine in terms of exercise, in terms of it might be a spring clean, it might be getting the food shop done, but structure that into your tra- into your diary and make it work for you. If you don't do that, it's so, so difficult to do. Yet so few people apply the structure and spend the time applying that structure. So be the exception. If you're listening to the episode, get your target in place, build it into your lifestyle, put some structure on it and make that structure visible. So I have a spreadsheet for my training. I have a spreadsheet for lots of things when it comes to my exercise. And I follow that spreadsheet and follow that structure. And it makes a huge difference to my training and how I get through my training program. Tip number three, you like this one, is apply the 80-20 rule. That's the rule that I live by myself. My clients live by it and always have done for the last 20 years. Makes me feel kind of old. But however, the 80-20 rule is brilliant. Very simple. It means you're trying to be healthy most of the time, 80% of the time. And then 20%, the odd time, you're having a treat or a glass of wine or a takeaway or whatever. That's normality. That's life. And it's a really simple way to eat healthier because you're not restricting anything. The first time you start restricting things, the diet is over. It's very difficult to do in the long term, as opposed to having it once a week, maybe on a a regular basis. That's the 80-20 approach. And it keeps people healthier for longer. And it's a really simple way just to live your life. Make the healthy choices 80% of the time. And every now and again, make the unhealthy choice. Have a chocolate bar, have an ice cream, have whatever you want and enjoy it. And never feel guilty for it. Because life, and we know this over the course of the last three months, is far too short. So 80-20 rule, healthy most of the time, and then the odd treat. It's really, really important when it comes to food. We'll, We'll look at food in a little while as well. The next tip is based around measurement. If you're a regular listener to the podcast, you will know I love to measure things. It's really important when it comes to health. So if weight loss is your target, well, measure. How do you do that? You get a really good scale. So get a crappy scale, spend the money and get a good one. The one that we recommend is, or I recommend is a brand called Why Things. They're about hundred euro. They're available on the app store and they sync with an app on your phone. It'll take your muscle mass and your body fat. And that's really important if weight is one of your targets. You want to have a look at muscle and fat and make sure that you're losing fat as opposed to muscle. And that's what people talk about. And no, muscle does not weigh heavier than fat. They're the exactly the same. A pound is a pound. But muscle takes up less space on the body and fat takes up more space. And that's the difference between the two. Key thing is, in terms of weight loss, you're trying to lose fat. And you'll only know that if you begin to measure. Um, that's, and the scales is called Y Things. It's W I T H I N G S. And I have no uh, sponsorship or affiliation with them as a brand. It's a product I've used myself. We have two here in the house, and they're fantastic. They're really good. So, measurement is crucial. Key thing around measurement seven days apart. That's the first thing. Measure the same time on the same day. That's the second thing. And then, thirdly, pick what you want to measure. So, your weight can be one, your waistline. We use your your belly button as the area for your waistline. You breathe normally, take the measurement. It should come down over time. Below 40 inches is the magic number. Government guidelines are very, very low for that. I tend to think they're a little bit too low and they put people off. We know below 40 inches puts you in the slightly healthier category. And above 40 inches puts you at a higher risk for pretty much everything in terms of health-based issues. So aim to get under 40. You can also measure your resting heart rate. You can measure your one kilometer run time or one kilometer jog or walk time. You can measure anything. It doesn't really matter. But that consistent measurement is crucial to keeping you healthy. So measuring same time, same day, seven days apart, gives you a target to work for and work towards. And it's a really important way to stay healthy. I weigh myself every Monday. I track my weight that way. I track my results that way. I will do a 5K time trial every couple of weeks. So I'll see where my fitness levels are at. I know what how long a certain cycle will take me and I'll be able to gauge my fitness based on that. It's all about consistent measurement. That's how to stay healthy in the long term is to measure something about your health and just keep working towards it. You're listening to Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. Okay, deep breath. Haven't been too scary so far, I hope. The goal for the for, for this episode is to show you how to get back on track. 
It's 80-20. It's finding your target. It's building into your lifestyle. And it's measuring just something about your health. It doesn't sound too scary and it shouldn't be. Um, for a lot of people, getting back on track can be a really scary experience. This is not that. This is long-term health and this is how I've done it myself and this is how I get my clients to do it. So I'm sharing all those tips with you. Now let's get into some of the specifics. So in terms of, okay, eating, you've got to eat healthier. No question about it. Um, first thing is what comes into the house gets eaten. So control what comes into the house. Apply the 80-20 rule. Uh, your shopping trolley should be full of foods that are colorful. And by that, I mean, you know, colorful fruit and veg. Um real uh, with very few ingredients on the label with a very short shelf life so it's taking things back to the way it used to be we want people to cook and prep food at that little bit more and that will get you healthier without measuring a calorie or measuring anything like that it's about cooking uh, more and eating real foods ideally in terms of foods you're eating every three hours so breakfast snack lunch snack dinner breakfast can be eggs porridge, whole grain toast, something like that, whole grain shredded wheat or Weetabix. A snack can be a portion of nuts or seeds and some fruit. Um, lunch, then you're looking at, again, if it's a sandwich or a wrap or a roll, it's whole grain or brown with protein and color. Uh, soup and some brown bread, fantastic. Snack then be around three hours later, around three o'clock again is nuts or nuts and fruit. And then dinner is protein and veg, um, basically a portion of protein and lots of color. Half your plate should be salad or vegetables. That's the easiest way to start and bulk it up with that. And then go for your protein, which is pretty much your palm full uh, from there. And then the rest of the plate you can fill with some carbohydrates. And that's pretty much it. Intermittent fasting comes up a huge amount when people chat about weight loss. But I... It's another short-term quick fix, but we do use it with some of our clients in regards to timing and window timing. So we get our, most of our clients to eat within a 12-hour window. So 12 hours from the first meal to the last meal. That means you're eating for 12 hours and you're digesting your food and processing your food for 12 hours. That's a really simple way to do it when you think about it. Give yourself a window. It controls that eating time frame, which is really important for lots of people who are snacking along with the nine o'clock news as Sharon gives us the update on the news every single evening. And you know what? Generally, you don't snack on the healthy things and that's a really easy way to get around it. Ideally, you're looking at uh, two hours before bed from your last meal. It gives your body plenty of time to digest your food. And again, it's 80-20, so it's having the odd treat and enjoying it and not worrying about it whatsoever. That's really, really important. One simple tip, we have covered it on the podcast before, is around mindful eating and slowing down the rate at which you eat. And that's putting down your life and your fork in between each mouthful and chewing your food for 30 seconds or so. Orla Walter's always, always uh, telling us about that. And then a really important thing. We eat too fast. The more work that we do in our mouth... The, uh, more, the less we have to do in our, in our digestive system to break it down. So use your mouth for what it's there for. The next tip is about movement. We need you to move more. You want to be healthier? Well then, okay, let's move. Movement will do lots of things. It'll burn calories, which is great. It will get you feeling better. It will get you sleeping better. It will, you will get some daylight, which is fantastic. The rate at which you move or the intensity at which you move is absolutely crucial too. So we need just to move a little bit more intensely. What I mean by that is, again, if you've listened to the podcast before, you'll know it's getting slightly out of breath. Fully out of breath is fantastic too for high intensity interval training, but slightly out of breath will work quite nicely. It's a bit more comfortable. The benefits are equally as good. So if this is your intensity as you're listening to this podcast, going for your walk or going for your run, you need to put the foot down and go that little bit faster where you're slightly out of breath, but can still have a conversation. And that'll mean you push, you're pushing your body to get the very best results. In terms of movement, you've got your cardiovascular. And so it's walking, running, cycling, swimming, surfing, any of those. Uh, or, and some resistance training then is important too. So that's lifting a weight in some way, shape or form. That can be your body weight or it can be a weight in, uh, like a barbell or a dumbbell. I was going to say a weight in a gym, but we're not sure when gyms are going to come back. Do have a listen to next week's episode, which we are going to talk to Ireland, active the governing body for leisure centres and gyms. And we're going to ask them all about gym reopening and how that's going to happen, what it's going to look like. So tune in next week for what's going to be an amazing episode and it's another podcast exclusive here on real health but that move that lifting and body weight is crucial so it's a squat it's a lunge it's a press up do have a look at the operation transformation uh, exercise routines for that i built them they're free and there is 15 routines up there they're really easy to follow and they're 30 minutes long so the website for that is rte.ie forward slash ot and um, those workouts will do really nicely and they don't need any equipment which is lovely and then some flexibility work is important too so Cardio is crucial, resistance is crucial, and then some flexibility work too to improve your flexibility. Particularly men, we're terrible at it, myself included. Uh, women tend to be far better, but it is important as you get older, as the body stiffens up, to loosen it out a little bit too. Then the third uh, 
component of the of of of, of weight loss most people miss it is rest. So we've looked at food, eating, we've looked at moving. Now you need to rest and recover. And rest and recovery is crucial. That comes back to sleep, obviously, the quality of your sleep, getting six to eight hours a night of really good deep sleep. You'll know where I'm going with this one. The classic tip I always give it is tech-free bedroom. That's the simplest thing. And do have a listen back to Deirdre McSweeney. She was part of one of our first ever episodes on the Real Health uh, Podcasts. You'll see it in here in the library. The whole episode based around sleep. That recovery is crucial. If you're not recovering, well, then you can't work as hard. You, It will affect your weight loss. It will affect your mood. It affects everything. So we need to recover. For me, I take one day a week off, potentially sometimes two, depending on the week of exercise. I eat normally. I recover, put my feet up a little bit more, and I just take the foot off the gas a little bit. And it is crucial. Key things to look out for if you are beginning to burn out is your heart rate will increase. So your resting heart rate increases. An easy session will become hard. Um and you'll take longer to recover from a session. You may be hunger, you may have less ho- less hunger, you may be sleeping better or sleeping worse. There's loads of symptoms of overtraining. I've had it several times, um, but there's some of the symptoms to look out for. Mood is generally a really good indicator and a general feeling of just tiredness and fatigue. So look out for those. Okay, we're nearly there. My next tip is around, forget about the bigger picture for a minute. All I want you to do over the course of the next seven days is focus on the targets that you're going to set. Set your targets for the next seven days. What are they? Make them specific. Build it into your diary. Apply that 80-20 rule. Aim to hit the different types of exercise. And then just focus on seven days. That's it. No more. No longer. Because we know that if you get through those seven days and forget about the rest of it, chances are you'll re- you'll go for the next seven days. And then the next and the next. And before you know it, you're one month in. You've lost some weight. You've got fitter. You've got the results that you're looking for. By focusing on the bigger picture, most of the time, it makes it far more difficult the classic is running a marathon. How do you run a marathon? You just take it mile by mile. When it gets hard, you really take it mile by mile because it's easier to focus on. And this is no different. Take each day as it comes. Try to win each day as best you possibly can. Remember, we're not looking for perfection. All we're looking for is some improvement. That's it. That's the goal. No more, no less. So don't put yourself under pressure. Don't be worried if you have a bad day, you fall off the wagon. Get back on track the next day. We've all had them. We're all stressed. We're all concerned. We're all worried. When we hear the numbers... And we worry about the future. Totally normal reaction. We're not aiming for perfection. It's about doing your very, very best. That's all you can do. And not to worry about anything else. Just take each day as it comes to your best every single day. And have your list of things to tackle every single day when it comes to your health. So have your seven-day target. And then break it down to a daily target. So every morning, I have a list of things to do every single day. Now, that covers work. That covers personal life as well as exercise. But that listen component is absolutely crucial when it comes to getting through the day. You just tick them off. And it's kind of sad in a way, but there's a lovely gratification from uh, getting through that list and putting a line through it and getting something done. It makes a big, big, big difference. I hope I haven't scared you. The goal of the session and the goal of the podcast is to show you how to improve your health. Apply these principles. Give it seven days. And watch what happens. You can make a huge, huge difference to your health in a really short space of time. My advice at the beginning was to take what works for you and apply that to your lifestyle. They may, some, some may work, none may work, all may work. But if whatever ones work best for you, they're the ones to apply and see what happens. The final tip, and I'll leave you with this one, is pretty simple. And that once you take these tips and you see what works for you, my advice is to back yourself. So I, you have to believe that you can do it. If you don't, then now is not the time to start. You've got to back yourself and believe that you can tackle the obstacles that are coming in your way. And trust me, you can. If you're struggling for motivation, have a listen back to some of the episodes that we've had in terms of Trisha's transformation, Mark Pollock, Michal and Mara Hertig. Have a listen to some of, some, some of the back catalogue. They're incredibly inspirational episodes and you'll be bowled over with some of the things that are being said. But the key thing is back yourself. You're going to work hard, you're going to get it done, and you're going to hit those targets and goals that you're specifically setting out. Folks, I really hope you enjoyed today's episode of Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. Simple tips that will make a massive impact. Do let us know how you're getting on. It's Real Health at independent.ie, at Carl Henry PT on Twitter and on Instagram. And as ever, we'll be back next week with a really fascinating episode looking at the future of gyms in Ireland with an exclusive podcast interview with Ireland Active. Have a fantastic week, apply the principles, and I'll see you next week. 
Himalaya Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry.